Hey guys, it's been a little while, um, but something happened this weekend that I wanted to share. But I want to apologize in advance for how my voice is gonna sound because it's very raspy at the moment because I have like I woke up with a sore throat. Um, so just know it's gonna sound extra raspy. Um, <laughs> this little girl's living outside now, so she looks like a mess. <laughs> um, okay. But anyways, so this weekend, actually, let me update y'all real quick. I have a boyfriend now. I found myself in a relationship again. And this weekend, okay, so this weekend, I was supposed to start a job. And something happened, not this weekend, but this week. I was supposed to start a job, but something happened where I had to wait for another week. So... I was really down about it and because I just want to get back to work like I'm in a transitional phase right now and obviously I have the girls so it's been really stressful to not be working right now. Um, so I was just really stressed that I couldn't start this job and my boyfriend was with me and I was really down and when we got home, so actually let me mention this, the plan was to go to the mall to go shopping for work clothes because I was gonna start work the next day, right? And so he was gonna take me shopping to get some work clothes and I was so excited. So that's why when I found out I couldn't work, I was really like let down. And when that happened, I got back in the car and I just like wanted to cry and he could see this. He's like, well, do you still wanna go to the mall or do you wanna go out to eat? And you know, me being in my sadness, I was just like, no, like let's just go home. And so then he agreed to take me home. We went home and he just dropped me off, right? Like obviously he gave me a hug and a kiss and just dropped me off. And as soon as he dropped me off, I go to the room and I said, I texted him and I put, I said, honestly, I'm kind of upset that you didn't try to make me feel better. As soon as he, I sent that message, I get a call from him. And he's like, do you want me to turn, I'm gonna turn back around now because you know, like, I want to make you feel better. So he comes back and when we got, when he got back, we just like cuddled in bed. Like he held me. I just really needed a hug. So I told him like, I just really wish, you know, you would have gotten down and given me a hug. And also like not asked me if I still wanted to go to the mall, but just did it, you know, like just took me to the mall because, or just stuck to the plans that we had already, you know, because I, I was already so let down by not being able to start work. And so I explained this to him and he's like, oh, I, well, I completely understand. And then he told me his perspective. He's like, I saw how down you were. And I just assumed that you wanted space. So I didn't want to like insist, you know, on taking you to the mall. I'm like so out of breath when I do these videos. Hold on. <laughs> Anyways, he's like, I feel like I don't know how to pace myself when I'm talking. So I just like lose my breath. But he said his perspective was that he just wanted space or that he just thought that I wanted space, right? And so I said, well, no, like, girls never want space when they're upset. Girls want to be heard. Girls want to vent. Girls want something to cheer them up, you know? And he was just like, okay, got it. I understand now for future reference. Now I know what to do. And also, this was the first time that he'd ever, he's ever seen me upset like this, so, you know, you, I had to cut him some slack there too because this is the first time that he's ever seen me upset and he just didn't know what way to go about it. And so he was like thinking like a man, thinking that I needed space, you know? And let me take a sip. Have you guys had these liquid IVs? That's why it's so like, it's not clear water because I put a liquid IV in here. Lifesavers. Um, so anyways, he was thinking like a man, thinking that I needed space. When, you know, girls don't want space. Girls just want to be cheered up and made to feel, be, to feel better, you know. So I explained that, and he understood right away. And he's like, okay, I get it. For future reference, that's what I'll do. And then he's like, and I was like, and I was excited about shopping, and now I won't be able to because, you know, I'm not going to start the job. 
And him understanding that that's what's gonna, what was going to cheer me up, he's like, let's go to the mall. And he still took me shopping, you know, and we still got an amazing, like, outfit for, for when I do start work. And literally, like, by the end of it, I couldn't even remember that. I didn't even remember that I cried that day. I didn't even remember, like, what I was down about. So I think what I got from that, because in my, like, this relationship feels like the healthiest relationship I've ever been in. And I feel like this is the healthiest relationship because there's so much communication and teachability in this relationship, which I've never experienced before. I myself have always been such a great communicator. I've always expressed my feelings, you know, as soon as I feel bad, but I've never met my match there. And I feel like with the boyfriend that I'm with right now, I've finally met my match. And not only do we communicate, but like he listens so well he's not listening to try to defend his point or like try to win an argument he's listening to completely understand where i'm coming from to see my perspective and then not only does he listen to it and understands it he communicates that he's understood my perspective so i would say and there's been many times where the communication and teachability has been demonstrated throughout our relationship but I just felt like that was a really good example because I feel like I just tell my boyfriend anything that like bothers me. And if it's within reason, he just understands. He's like, yeah, okay, like I won't do that again. Okay, now I understand. Next time I'll do this, you know? So being that, I feel like those two factors are the reason why we're in such a healthy relationship, yet so many people lack. And I feel like a lot of people think that they know how to communicate, but they don't, there's still a very passive, uh, there's a, a very passive aggression like instilled in most people. Like you don't wanna, you don't, in relationships, I notice that a lot of girls don't communicate as soon as they feel bad about something. They just want the man to see that they're upset and then have the man ask them like, oh, what's wrong? Like girl, just communicate, like say what you don't like. And if he's a man, he's gonna listen, he's gonna understand and he's gonna try to change his ways because he wants to make you happy. I'm gonna tell you something, if he doesn't change his ways, that's not a man, you're dating a boy. And at that point, if you're willing to put up with that, that's why you're not in a healthy relationship because you're allowing yourself to put up with that. You think that's what you deserve. But you're probably willing to put up with that because you yourself are a girl. Like, you're not a woman, you're a girl. You're, you don't, if you don't know how to communicate well, if you don't know how to communicate your needs, your wants, how you're feeling, you're just a girl, you're still not a woman. You need to like get to that point to call yourself a woman. I'm sorry, like I don't, like if you're taking offense to this, then you probably got some work to do, sis. <laughs> and so the reason you're willing to put up with the man who still acts like a boy is really because you're just a girl too. You're not really acting like a woman. And not only is it about being able to communicate your needs, but when a man is communicating with you, how do you react? Like genuinely, I want you to think. I don't want you to be like, yeah, I'm good at that. Like I, I can take constructive criticism because I hear this all the time. I hear people say like, and I used to do interviews at my job, so I know, I've heard this so many times. What would happen at work is like, I would interview a girl to hire her and she would be like, I love constructive criticism, like, I, like please, I welcome it, like I'll take it in. And then guess what would happen when I would give her constructive criticism? Yeah, she would get mad. So really stop to think, when you get constructive criticism, when, when your man is communicating with you, how do you take it? And don't just say, yeah, I'm good, at, I'm good at communicating. Really think about how you react. Really think about how your body feels, how you feel mentally and emotionally. Because most people just take the defensive side as soon as they get told anything. Most people do. And for me, the way I see it is like, when my man is telling me something or communicating his need to me, I don't look at it as like, oh, I'm offended. I look at it as like, okay, how can I, this is like so good because now from this conversation, after he's told me this, like after he's communicated this to me, we're gonna grow from here. So I get excited if he ever has anything to say to me because I'm like, okay, good, let's have this conversation. Let's hash it out. Let's talk through it. And then we come out on the other side feeling so much closer to each other. We feel like we're so understood and seen by each other. So when you're upset and not communicating your needs, just being passive about it and then expecting your man to just guess how you're feeling, you're really damaging the relationship. It's honestly childish, in my opinion. I think it's super childish to not communicate your needs but then expect your man to understand all, of, all that you're feeling or all that you want. 
if anything, you're neglecting your relationship of the healthy dynamic that it can grow into. Like, if you would just communicate with your man and, you know, you're, you're teaching him the skill of listening and understanding where you're coming from. But if you're never going to communicate with him, how do you expect him to ever understand you? And then some of y'all have the audacity to be mad at your man for not understanding what your needs are without you communicating. Like, be fucking for real, sis. Like, that's childish. You're not in middle school. Like, take accountability for yourself. How old are you? If you're in your 20s watching this, especially 25 and up, there is no excuse here. Like, you need to know how to communicate. If you don't know yet, then you need to get on that. If you want help with that, reach out to me on my DMs. I'm a master communicator. I love communication. I love confrontation. I love talking through problems. You know, like, I love all of that. If you're looking for a way to improve on that, then, you know, just reach out to me. But there is no excuse. You should be good at this by now. So when you don't know how to communicate, you're just attracting men who also don't know how to communicate. And then it's just, I just think when, when a relationship lacks communication, it's either one of two things. It's going to be toxic or it's going to be boring as shit because you guys don't know how to like level up to the ne get to the next level of your relationship. And it's just both of those factors are going to end up ending your relationship. And once you've got communication down on the other end, you can't be a hypocrite. You can't be like, oh, OK, I can communicate all my needs to you. But when you communicate to me, I'm not having it. Uh uh. Girl, you know, you got to be able to take in what he's saying if you're going to give him what, what you're going to be complaining about, you know? So whenever your man or your partner tells you something that he doesn't like about you, how are you taking it? Are you getting defensive or are you saying, okay, how can I work on that? Or are you trying to understand where he's coming from? Because for me, like I said, like whenever my man tells me something, I see it as, a, as an opportunity for growth. I see it as an opportunity for my, for my own self to grow and for our relationship to grow. So when he tells me something, it's about taking it in, communicating that I've understood where he comes from, and then saying, okay, then how can I change or improve upon what it is that he doesn't like? You know, I'm not taking an, a defensive side to it. Most girls today, I've noticed, like, as soon as you tell them one little thing that they didn't like to hear, bye, cut off next man, next person, like, be fucking for real. Like, this is why relationships don't last nowadays. That's my new favorite term, be fucking for real. <laughs> but that's why relationships don't last nowadays. Like, you see something wrong in your man, or, you know, he says something that you don't like, and it's by next. Like, girl, like, we gotta be, we gotta be open to this, you know? And then also, it's not about just, okay, if your man says he doesn't like something about you, you change. No, I'm not saying that. But you listen. And if you agree with him and you see there is ways you can improve upon something and change, then take it and apply it to yourself. But also there's certain situations like, you know, obviously if he's asking you to change how you dress or how you look in a certain way or something that you don't agree with, I'm not saying you have to be agreeable. I'm just saying, are you actually listening to what someone has to say about you? Or are you just dismissive about it? Are you just offended by it right away? Because if you just want to communicate to your partner what you don't like and what your needs are, but you're not taking into consideration what they want from you, that's just hypocritical. You can't expect ha happiness to grow in that relationship or any, or any growth to occur there. Like That's just not going to be a healthy relationship. That's just going to be a submissive man who, doesn't even, who is in their feminine and doesn't allow you to be in your feminine. So it's about teachability. Like what happened with my boyfriend when I told him, hey, I didn't like how you went about that, way, that situation when I was down. I wish you had gone about it this way. And he learned. He took it in. He learned. He's like, got it. Next time it's done. You know, it's about teachability. Are you willing to be taught? And if you're not, then you just, like I said, you're not going to grow ever. You're never going to grow in life. And that's petty. Like you need to, it's not about, it's not personal. You know, when people, well, it is personal, but... You have to understand that sometimes people tell you stuff about yourself out of your, for your own good, like out of love. And because of our communication style and our teachability, my boyfriend and I have never had a difference where that has become an argument. I feel like most relationships nowadays, like as soon as you have one little difference, it has to turn into yelling or, or offending one another or just being rude or like having an attitude towards each other or a tone towards each other. Like, 
just communicate, like talk to each other, talk through it and understand what the difference is. And if you can come to a conclusion that you both agree on or if you can agree to disagree. Once you learn how to communicate and listen to what other people say about you without taking offense to it, you're going to start to attract these men who also know how to communicate their needs and listen to you the way you want to be listened to. Not only listen to you, but understand you and help you feel seen. But because you're not there yet, you're not gonna attract that healthy relationship. If you yourself don't know how to communicate or you know listen to what others have to say about you, how could you possibly attract a healthy relationship? You need to work on that, be by yourself. Make sure you have those two things down and then go out into the dating pool again. But for now, just work on yourself, sis. If you don't have these two basic things down, there is no reason why you should be dating. And if you take offense to that, there is no reason why you should be dating. <laughs> so the next time you have a difference with your partner or in general with anyone, I want you to take these, these things into, into consideration. When you're listening, are you listening to defend yourself or are you listening to genuinely understand where that person is coming from? Another crucial, crucial thing that you need to like, understand when you're communicating is you have to make the other person feel understood. So when they're explaining their side of the story or where they're coming from, you need to communicate to them, okay, I understand where you're coming from. Because that is how the conversation can be peaceful and neutral. You have to see, say, communicate to the other person that you are understanding what they're saying. And then from communicating with each other and then expressing that you understood where each other's point of view is coming from, then you can, you can start to work towards a conclusion. And if you're saying, oh, Cynthia, but I am good at communicating. I already do this with my partner, then, and, but they're not the ones, but they're not reciprocating it. They don't know how to communicate. Then that's not your partner. That's not your man. Let it go, sis. I'm telling you right now, I'm sorry, but that is, not your, that is not your man. That's a boy. If you are already at the stage where you know how to communicate clearly your needs, your wants, and whenever you're, you're bothered, but he doesn't, it's just not going to work. Why, and also, why are you putting up with that? Let, let's ask that. Why are you putting up with that? As a woman who knows how to communicate clearly and knows how to hear what others have to say about her, you should not be settling for a man who doesn't know how to do the same. Like, you should not be settling. Women don't settle for less than what they are. Why are you trying to fix this man? If he doesn't know how to communicate, he needs to learn on his own. You guys both need to be single. He needs to be single and learn that on his own. You shouldn't have to teach him. You shouldn't have to be his little, I did just say teachability. Okay, fine. You know what? I did catch myself there, so hold on. If he's willing, to learn how to communicate effectively with you, you can accept that, that's fine. If he actually is showing that his communication skills are getting better because you're teaching him, then I think that's valid. But if you're communicating with him and you're also communicating that you don't like, that he doesn't know how to communicate and he's not changing, you should not be settling for that, okay? Just let it go. You deserve better, you're a queen, you, you know how to communicate, and there is a man who will be receptive to how you communicate and be a healthy communicator himself. Do not settle for that. I don't care how much you love him, he does not love you. If he is not willing to learn how to communicate for you, he does not love you. Any man who is not gonna listen to what you have to say and actually apply it to themselves does not love you. Like, put that into your head. He does not love you, I'm telling you right now. My dog's throwing up, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this. With all that being said, if you feel like going more in depth with anything that I mentioned, or feel like you could use some help with your communication skills or with being more receptive to others, just know that my DMs are open to all of my subscribers. I'm genuinely so grateful for all of you and I really love to hear from you guys. So I'll put my uh, Instagram username down in the description and I look forward to hearing from y'all. Thank you so much for watching.